everybody, and welcome to Six Minute Access of Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta, ta, ta, ta. On the Switch. It's a Nintendo fucking Switch. This came out on the Switch. On the Switch. Yeah. Exclusively still on Nintendo platforms. That's crazy. That well, I guess not. I don't know. It's it's kind of crazy. Uh, we already talked about that last time. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go uh, select. Yeah, just uh, jump to a. Just select to a chapter. So I'm not far in this one. I just finished the first one. Um, of course, I've beaten this on the. Uh... So, to start with, I'd like to say that if you if you don't know anything about Bayonetta, you've never seen anything about Bayonetta, just go back and watch our 60 minute access. I or just... from last week of Bayonetta, uh, and then if you want to play it, play it. Yeah, and then I think this, this first little, uh, this first little cutscene here that we're gonna get into is gonna, is also gonna tell you all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the, like the first beautiful metropolitan San Francisco esque New York, I New York ish. Yeah, New York ish. Sega, Sega, Sega. Nintendo. <laughs> God damn it, I love that's how the first place we both go. I know. Uh, Platinum Games. P. Team Little Angels. Hell yeah. Versus Hell yeah. Team Little Devils. Yoji Shinomura. Shimomura. Shimomura. I can read, I don't, I don't fucking. Hideki Kamiya, the man. Kamiya. Hashimoto. Uh,. But yeah, so this game, uh, like the first one opens up, it's like all angels and devilly and like biblical. Yeah. And it like doesn't totally like it's epic, but it doesn't set the tone. Absolutely. For, for what this shit is. This fucking opens up like Batman Returns. Uh oh. <laughs> I love her so much. I forgot he has a Brooklyn accent. I've li we've been doing Brooklyn accents literally. We're always like, hey, hey, the fuck you doing? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> fucking Danny DeVito. <laughs> this fucking Danny DeVito like. Devani Danny DeVito looking ass. Ah, oh, she's such a babe. I can smell your Red Bull. That's unfortunate. It is. It tastes really good. It's good to it tastes know. really good, yeah. I don't know. I'm not usually into, like, sugar-free drinks, but... I don't like energy drinks, period. They were I have a bad... I'm kind of bad about it, because I don't necessarily like them, but sometimes I can't function if I don't have one, which means I have a caffeine addiction. The, um, the, they were... Energy drinks were ruined to me by doing, uh... Doing podcasting. Yeah. And here's what, because we used to do a weekly energy drink test where we try to do energy drink every, every week. Right. Um, and I found most of them to be disgusting. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Most of them are. I, I have a few that I cycle through. Let me tell you, the best tasting one mm -hmm. was a goddamn NASCAR one. Yeah. It was called Jeff Gordon's 24. Jeff Gordon's 24. And it I'm disappointed that it's not Jeff Gordon's 24. And That'd be pretty great. <laughs> the but, grimace on his face just now, let me tell you. Uh, it was, uh... Oh, shit. Jean. Uh-oh. 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 Yo. What's up? Tell me you can do that on the motorcycle. Hey, can I tell packages, too? Yeah. You always know how to make an empty. <laughs> wow. That's so rude. I know. Those are like for his kids. Yeah. Some of those are hers. I know. She doesn't care though. Look at her. She's fucking bougie. She's all decked out to the nines right now just to go shopping. Like, <laughs> on a Sunday. Yeah. Jesus. On a Tuesday. Forget about <laughs> it. What's this Cereza shit? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Stop the band at one. Yeah. 
Uh, I finished that game last night, and I forgot how unbelievably epic that game's ending is. Oh, hell yeah. Like, hell yeah. No spoilers. Oh, God. The only reason I say no spoilers is even though it's like a hella old game, like the remaster just got released and still not enough people have played them. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason why. Yeah. Normally it's like, it's like a what, like an eight-year-old game or something like that. Our I wouldn't care. Our cutoff is six months. That's, um, that, that's, that's, I think, I still think... The six month rule is fine, but I still think you gotta put a spoiler warning first. Yeah, you, you can just, you're a little bit more free to talk about it, but it's just like a courtesy thing. Yeah. I'd say once, like for, for like a movie, once it's out on DVD, it's free game. Yes, yes. For a game like, I don't know, once they've released all the DLC maybe. Or I'm gonna get it. <laughs> this guy's my favorite so far. We'll talk later. Enzo. Yeah. Fucking shit, dude. It's been so long since I've even, like, thought about Bayonetta, and now we're doing, we've been doing, this is, like, the second of two episodes. Of the Bayonettas? Of the Bayonettas. So, Bayonetta 1 I love. The fucking Bayonettas! Bayonetta 1 I love, but I consider it flaw, like, flawed in some big ways. Yeah. Bayonetta 2 is probably my favorite game of this console generation. Hmm. Like, hmm. I love this fucking game. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking remember when they announced Bayonetta 2, it kind of, like, it, w it was shocking because it was Nintendo, but for me it was, like, almost more shocking because I was like, really? They're making it up? Yeah, pretty much. The, the, the salt was so delicious. It was. It made all my chips taste fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. Just... It made my fries better at In-N-Out. You know Ray gets upset at In-N-Out because he has to salt his own fries. I'm fucking mad about it. Why? Because they taste like shit otherwise. Okay, but let me let me run this bun by you. Like it's not that much effort. It's really not. Yeah, but I don't have to do that anywhere else. Yeah, but here's my thing. Also, like as someone who is currently on a low sodium diet, it means I can actually eat In-N-Out French fries. True. True. I'll just fucking, you can get your in and out all you want. I'll go to Five Guys and get their Cajun fries. Those are pretty sweet. Their Cajun fries are dang. Um, she just kicked an airplane. She just kicked a jet. She just kicked a fucking fighter jet. Why is she so badass? She is. That's who she is. It is, yeah. I love how they make, like, all these, like, renaissance style biblical monsters yeah like the, like none of them are like modern day angels style like all of it's like really old school like, yeah that reminds me that i need to write the, the review for radiant historia <laughs> i mean like i've already played the game it's just like um this this week has been stupid busy for me i you know i feel uh oh hello <laughs> I can't say, um, I can't say anything about it, but we just got a Yaku Yakuza 6 review code. Nice. And nice. I've been playing that for That's review. fucking awesome. Is it good? I can't say. Oh, yeah, you can't say. Cause I can't the, say shit. Yeah, because of the embargo. Yeah, so they can say I'm doing it. Yeah. And it got leaked on PSN. Wait, for real? Like, yeah, that, so with, so... Select people who download the Yakuza 6 demo, it gave them the full game on accident. <laughs> that is the most Sony shit I've ever heard. Oh. Uh, this is so hype. This, this is, is super so cool. hype. If this doesn't convince you that this game is dope, then you have no soul. I don't know how you can watch this and not want to be like, fuck yes, I need to play this. Yeah. Yeah. The cool thing about Bayonetta games, too, is that normally in cutscenes like this, they show you a bunch of shit you just can't do in the games. But you can she do... essentially moves like this in the yeah, game. Yeah, like, so. you can do most of that. Yeah. Like, I'm not good enough to do a lot of it, but... Right. Yeah, this... This... The, oh, the, it looks better than in the cutscene. Which never happens. But, like, the colors are so vibrant. Like... Yeah. Christ. I think part of that's because we finally fixed what the hell was wrong with my Switch visuals. Oh, yeah. That that certainly helped. Yeah. Because every week I would constantly bitch, why does all the Switch stuff look really washed out? <laughs> it, was, I, it was just your fucking Switch? <laughs> it was just the TV setting. It was my fucking Switch! Yeah, yeah it was just the TV setting. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm having that problem right now because I've been playing video games and anytime I watch a movie, like, I got Justice League on PSN mm-hmm. um, and anytime I try to watch it, like, certain colors are just gray. That has I think to be like a TV team. setting. The, yeah, that has to be something like that. Probably like game mode oh, or something. When I, when I bought this TV, I wanted good picture and low latency, and I got both those wishes. Yeah. Um, Sony high-end, man. Their, their high-end TVs are real good. I like Sony. Um, Just as, as, a, as a general company, like, their movies could be better. They could be better at making movies, but otherwise, like... Oh, man, Venom looks so good, though. Oh, man, I'm so excited for that. That so definitely... That definitely doesn't oh, look boy. like a, an early 2000s Fox superhero movie. Um, Speaking of which! Hold that thought. Alright. We need to see this. I know, I... Perfect segue, though. I will... I will get to that in a moment. Oh. Yo. Yo. They... Everything looks so good. It's much improved over the first one. Yeah. Like, like they were like, we're actually getting to make another? Yeah. Make the most of this shit. We might not get this chance again. And then we're getting a third! I know. Oh. Super exciting. And Rodon being fucking Rodon catches the fucking, catches the presence, the jet. Gets hit by a sign. Beautiful. Oh. Anyway, your story. Okay. Now that, now that. So speaking of uh, terrible 20th Century Fox superhero movies from like the early to late 2000s, uh, it was Kay's birthday, uh, birthday she, celebration yesterday. For those of you who don't know Kay, she was on the Shadow of the Colossus. She was on the Shadow of the Colossus video. Yeah, she was a super nice person. Uh, one of our one of our good friends over here, friend of the show, and uh, fucking. It was her birthday, so Dimitri, Kay, and I hung out at my place, and we were trying to figure out something to do, but it was snowed in. We were snowed in, pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of what happened to me last night. Right. So we had uh, a bottle of Jack and a bottle of Cherry Coke. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't really drink anything, um, but Kay kept pouring Jack into hers, and then Dimitri, uh, drunk as he is... As he is one to do. As he is normally. Um, fucking... He was like, oh, you know what? Kay's never seen Dragon Ball Evolution. Why would you? Why? So uh, that's just, what we did know, for yeah, her birthday. Yeah, what a shitty way to spend your birthday. I'm sorry, <laughs> Kay. That's what you we did for her terrible friend. You know what, though? We ended up making an 85-minute long movie last three hours because every single time something pissed us off in that film, yeah, we paused it and ranted about it for like a good... See, Dimitri likes Dragon Ball Z, but he doesn't really... He's not a big fan of the anime. He's mostly a fan of, like, the movies and the and the, the, the games and stuff. Like, he's more of a, a casual fan. Okay. K has no concept of Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan, obviously. Of, yeah. Like, we all know that. Yeah, we both are. Like, yeah, yeah. We're huge fans of the show. Uh... I have that movie because my mom bought it for me when it came to DVD back when it came, when it first came out. I remember that Giant Bomb did a quick look of the PSP game of that, and it's probably oh one my of my God. it's probably one of my favorite things on the internet. I used to have that game, um, not because I I like wanted it, but again because my mom kind of like bought it for me when it first came out. The, the movie came out in two thousand nine. I was like. Uh, how old was I? How old am I right now? I'm 26? Yep. 2018? Uh, yes. I was like 16? Okay, I, I, was like 16, I, I know 16 I'm not so. that much uh, older than you. No, no, I was like 16 at the time, but I, I you know, hadn't quite had my first job yet, and, uh, you know, DVDs were still 20 bucks when they first came out and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway. My, my mom got the DVD for me when oh, the movie first came out, so I have it because, like, what am I going to do with it, you know? What? Destroy it, I guess. Uh, get it get it signed by the creators. I want to get it signed by the cast. How fucking funny would it be? Like, Piccolo is played by Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, How fucking funny would it be to show up to, like, a con? 
and like go to his booth while like everybody else is buffing stuff everywhere. I know, and like, I bring him fucking Dragon Ball Evolution, and he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" I was like, "Are you trolling?" He probably yeah. enjoy it. He probably would. He likes Dragon Ball. Like he's a big fan of the series of the original series. Oh, are you probably still play Piccolo then? You can tell he cares too. He's the only person in the entire cast that gives a shit. He just also gets stuck with the worst character. In the movie. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Was... Actually, Goku is the worst, because, like, the whole time you're watching this movie, you've got this fucking... His name is Justin Chatwin, the actor who plays him. Mm -hmm. And he's the fucking... He's the most Chad Goku they probably could have gotten for the role. Like, he's not buff or anything, but he's definitely got that, like, douchey white boy face. Okay. Uh, and when it, so when he's around any of the other characters in the movie, he's like, have you seen it? I have not. Uh, I might subject you to it at some point because you'll at least laugh with me. But uh, we should do a we should do a video about it. We should we should do. A <laughs> you know, you know what we should do actually because we were talking about doing that Dragon Ball series with uh, Quinn and Tammy. Make them watch Dragon Ball Evolution at the end of it. Make them watch through Dragon Ball Kai and then like be like, all right, here's Dragon Ball Evolution. See, but everybody has. Yeah, I it. You know why I keep it is because it's like a good cautionary tale. Anytime someone tells me that something is, like, the worst movie they've ever seen, I'm like, have you fucking seen Dragon Ball Evolution? <laughs> this is the most, like, minimal effort fucking, like, no respect. It's the most disrespectful adaptation I think I've ever seen. It doesn't even resemble... There's not a moment it's, in the entire on. series... Okay, it's not Christmas it. without caviar. True. I guess, All you right. fucking rich ass. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like... Uh, I don't want to make the whole episode about Dragon Ball Evolution, but, uh... No, I feel you, though. We... I... We... The whole entire movie, Goku's wearing fucking Chad clothes. And he doesn't wear the gi once, and they're like, Give him a, a faux hawk, that's probably good enough, right? Oh. Wow. Uh, Did he know, like... Anything about Dragon Ball? Yeah, Probably like... not. Then why the fuck would you sign on to do it? Because you get paid to do it? Dude, the, the, okay, so the guy who plays Goku is like, it, he plays the, the son in War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. and he's the main character in Invisible, so he'd already had a pretty decent career up till that point, but then comic book movies were just starting to get big, like really big. I think Iron Man had just come out at that point. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. It was like, that was the what, 08? Yeah. Iron Man came out in May 08. Yeah, no, Dragon Iron Ball Evolution Iron came out in 2009. So, so yeah, it was after Iron Man. Yeah, so I'm sure, like, he got the offer, and his representative was like, or his agent or whatever was like, Dragon Ball Z is super popular. Actually, this came out during, like, a dead period for Dragon Ball Z content. Because, like, Dragon Ball Z was, like, over for, like, five or six years at that point in the U.S. Like, nothing was happening with Dragon Ball Z. My theory is that 20th Century Fox needed to keep the film rights to Dragon Ball. So, so they, they, just, this, they just, just rushed out a piece of shit movie, yeah. But, uh, you know, his agent probably thought it was a really good idea and that it was going to make a lot of money. I think it made, like, $8 million over its budget. Wow. Like, total, like, domestic and foreign. Wow. It pissed off Akira Toriyama enough to make Battle of Gods. So, so... We have Dragon Ball Evolution to thank for Dragon Ball Super. And... and and yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that is my favorite thing about you know, uh, it. It was so disrespectful I, to Dragon Ball. D depending on how the worst part is, Toriyama is listed as an executive producer in this film. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things about Dragon Ball Super that I've kind of come to realize, damn is, dude, intense. They just rip our soul out. Yeah. That's this whole game, and you store most of this game. You journey to hell to, to rest John's soul out, John's soul out huh. and then you realize some other stuff is at work. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That one arm grabbed her ass. Uh, anyway, what were you going to say about Dragon Ball Super? Uh, I think that the turn of power might be the, like, one of, if not the best arc in Dragon Ball anything in Besides maybe Frieza. Depend and you have Dragon Ball Evolution to think for that. Depending on how it ends. Yeah. Because we're still waiting for the ending. Like, because every person on the team has gotten a moment that's like, oh shit, they're a badass. Yeah, dude. That's been great. And you have Dragon Ball Evolution. You have Justin Chatwin's shitty performance as Goku. 
And it wasn't like, it's not like Justin Chatwin's an inherently bad actor. It's just that you can tell nobody gives a shit in this movie and nobody was given any source material to work off of. There was nothing in this movie oh, that, like... Look at this shit. Yeah, the writer for Dragon Ball Evolution actually, like, uh, came out years later and said that it was a total cash grab and he apologized for it. I think last year he made a he made a very public apology saying, I'm sorry about Dragon Ball Evolution, I made it for a cash grab, I wasn't passionate about it, and I promise I'll never... Um, I'll never make a movie that, for... I remember that, like, coming out. Like, I remember that being, like, a news story on The Escapists. I'm kind of wondering if it's legit, but... I don't see why it wouldn't be, I guess. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite news stories, uh, or, like, fake news stories, was, like, someone quoting uh, Miyazaki. Anime, anime, anime is... was a mistake. Yeah, that became a meme. Yeah, yeah, motherfucker! Mash! That became a meme. Dude, Miyazaki has quit, has quit anime, like, the last three or four films he's made. He's been like, this is my last one. And then I'm retiring. It's like Hideo Kojima. Yeah, and then a few months later, he comes out of retirement to make something new. It, it, he's just one of those artists, it seems, that, like, constantly wants to, uh, uh, he's constantly got something to say, you know? That's the important thing. You know, um, I feel that because, like, every now and then I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe I should just stop or take a break, and then, like, I, just, I like, I'm like, that'd be fucking dumb. Fuck yeah. Uh, I don't know, you obviously love what you're doing. Yeah. So. This is something we all dig. For sure. Uh, yeah, boy! Even if we never get paid for this, this is still just like a, a fun way to spend your free time. Yeah, like, I, I have a great time every day. I even, I even like the, in quotes, work bits of it. Like, yeah. The, like, so, you know, the, it's oddly... The sending emails and... Sending emails and, like... Going on social media, tweeting at Origin PC. Yeah. Um, That's your second gold? Uh, I believe so. Uh, by the way, uh, I finally sat on a laptop and bought one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, laptop shopping. Stressful. For, for high end laptops fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially if you're like me, and I, I have very specific configurations I want for builds. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, you're pretty picky. And, like, yeah. It was just... Especially, like, for some manufacturers, because, like, MSI, for example, has, like, a billion different models. Yeah. And I'm like, alright, I want one with a 1070. Okay, so half a billion now. Mm -hmm. Great. It's like, how, how do you have them organized by? I don't fucking know, just... You know, what do you, what do you like? Maybe we can help you. <laughs> yeah, like... So, like, I ended up going with Origin PC because I kind of had a checklist. I wanted something thin and light Yeah. because after a CES, three E3s, and a PAX with that laptop, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then uh, my next on my checklist was, um, was I wanted something with a 1070 or 1070 Max Q at minimum a 1060 because I wanted to be able to play games still. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you fucking scumbag. Oh shit. Enzo's like some fucking Harvey Weinstein shit over here. You know! She's pretty fucking attractive. <laughs> For a dead girl. I'm not saying I would, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. <laughs> right. Just don't walk in here like three hours from now. Give me some time. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Uh, back to the sidebar there. Though. Rodon's a fucking badass. He is. He's basically telling you how to get to hell to, yeah. to rescue your friend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. 24 minutes in. Uh... Yeah, that, that intro, right? Yep. Um, so, but, uh, what was I say? Uh, yeah, so I ended up going with Origin PC. Right. And here's why. So, Thin and Light, that automatically just fucking murders. Makes you nut. Just, f sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thin and Light is Bronson's, uh, Bronson's, uh, thing when it comes to PCs. 
Uh, I actually love really small form factor rigs. Yeah. I think they're so fucking cool. Yeah. I don't have one because I hate working on them. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. it's a pain in the ass. To, that's the reason I bought a full tower. I was just like, I want this. Well, and yours is beefy as shit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But for a laptop, I was like, okay, I wanted a thin and light because, uh. Aww. Oh, poor <laughs> Enzo's kids. Damn. Cold. <laughs> Rodon's gonna be Santa for his kids. Why didn't they animate this? They very obviously, like, posed everything. It just seems a little bit of a waste uh, of this, so, like, freeze frame. It. So, from what I heard, it, in the first one, it's because they ran out of money. Hmm. And in the second one, it's to keep a consistent style. Okay. So that is what I have heard. Huh. Ain't this a motherfucker? Uh, Alright, I'll fucking take it. <laughs> but, like, I was looking for a thin and light. Yeah. And, uh, so that automatically, like, takes out 90% of the high-end market, like, uh -huh. just in one go. Well, yeah, because the technology isn't, you yeah. know, always going to be there for, yeah. that, for that sort of thing. Yeah, that's absolutely all right, that current record. Um, and then it's like, okay, well, that leaves Origin, Razer, MSI, and, like, a couple of select Asus models. Yeah. Um... The reason I didn't go Razer is because it had, uh, is because the price to performance was not ideal. Right. Because 1800 bucks for a 1060 hurts me. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's like 14 inch screen and your lock is small. I was just like, if it was like 1400 bucks, I probably would have immediately picked up the Razer. Yeah. Uh, but no, and it has a great reputation. Fair enough. MSI, it has a lot of... So, MSI's laptop problem is they come with a lot of bloatware installed. Oh, shit, yeah. And it's just like, ugh, I don't want to deal with that. Like, just gutting all that and reinstalling Windows. Yeah. Um, and then, like, Asus, you, I, you have kind of two options. I go something more affordable, but also, like, with a little heavier... And like kind of more prone to breaking, or I can go all out, but it's like way more expensive. Yeah. So I went with Origin because they had pretty much everything I wanted, and they're expensive, but not like max budget was two thousand. I ended up spending spending twenty one hundred. Right. So, uh, oh, and for those of you on the show who know, I fully support Alien. Oh, hello, Satan. That is literal Satan. <laughs> you support what? Uh, I love Alienware, and I love yeah. their laptops. It's just that they didn't have a thin light. Yeah. Or, like, something even comparable. Like, their, right. like their 13-inch is six pounds. Damn, dude. And it's because their laptops have an aluminum, like, roll cage on the inside. Okay. So they're really durable, but they're, you know, heavy as shit. Yeah. So. Late Finally title card. Finally get a title card. Yeah, late title card. One of my favorite things. Hooray. I actually don't don't ever really mind it. It's very stylish. So. But yeah, so laptop shopping fucking sucks. You know what's something weird as like a, a, an aside that I noticed movies like do have have not like where where are the title cards in movies anymore, you know? Star Wars always has them, but that's cuz it's like tradition for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But like very rarely do uh, movies have like opening titles. Um, or at least opening credits. Why? Uh, yeah, you know, I, th I you would think like Marvel would have them more. Yeah, but they almost never do. When I don't remember know. like Iron Man having one. I have to go back and watch Iron Man. I gotta go back and watch all the Marvel movies. I, I have been in the process of doing that. Yeah, yeah. Still haven't seen Black Panther. <laughs> Great film. <laughs> um, if you were free tonight, I would say let's go. But. Well, I gotta wait. I already promised someone I would wait. Oh, so. right. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'd be down. My next uh, movie I'm gonna be seeing in theaters is a. Uh... Aww. Aww. Didn't want to crush the little squirrel. Her new costume is interesting. I uh, I like this one. I, I like, like them both. One. I think they both look red. They're both red. I like this one more than the other one, though. I think it's the. I think it's her hair. The pixie cut. It's not necessarily that it's a pixie cut. It's more so just like the overall like style of it just looks better to me. Oh, cool! You're in uh, fucking uh, the port city from Sonic 06. 
Oh god, don't say that. <laughs> don't ruin this for everyone. Don't ruin this game for other people. Right. I've already ruined it for myself. JK, the internet did. Oh shit. Oh shit, oh. Cat don't like swim. I forgot I could do this. Is there secrets under here? Uh, or is it just because? I think it's just because. I'm sure there are weird. secrets somewhere around here for that. But yeah. I feel like there would have to be. So fucking cool. Japanese design aesthetic is always so great. Uh, yeah, like, this game looks dope as hell. Yeah. Uh, for those of you wondering what the tech stuff with this one versus the Wii U version, frame rate on this, it's more stable overall, like, during heavy action sequences. Doesn't dip as hard. Uh, still runs at 720p. Yeah. Undocked, it runs at 720p even, so... That's awesome. Uh, you get the full picture even when uh even on portable even on portable which that's nice yeah um also some effects have been improved and shadows yeah on the switch version so that's uh, a little bit of a technical rundown for people well there you have it yeah I, anytime that we do like a version comparison like this right you gotta kind of uh, run down the tech yeah uh like i actually uh, I actually played the PC demo of, uh, Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the tech demo? Yeah. yeah no, um, the, uh, not the benchmark. They, not they, the benchmark? They, they put out an actual demo. Oh, yeah? How do you like it? Um, I, I mean, my, my computer can run that game maxed out at 60, and it does look significantly better while doing that. Right. Um, as for the way it plays, um, it's, like, the frame rate stuff was definitely a nice improvement game's still the same yeah, yeah a lot like combat's better because of it but right. like other than that it's very much like yep this is uh, what I played yeah you even collect rings like in Sonic <laughs> I think that uh, that was an intentional mod I believe probably um, um no I mean that's dope uh, yeah. I like all of the weird ass DLC that the PC is getting yeah so, so, so strange Freeman. so strange it makes sense because Steam, mm -hmm. but like, god damn, is it weird seeing Noctis in glasses with a fucking crowbar. Can you warp with the crowbar too? Like, that's the coolest thing. Just, you just chuck your crowbar and warp there. Beat people with a crowbar. Yeah. I um, can only deal damage there was another, during which there was another, time. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Gordon Freeman's also a playable character in the game, which is pretty weird. Uh, was that true? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you can play in uh, in in the in fifteen, you can play as Gladio, Prompto, and Ignis now. Oh, okay. Like the uh, pretty much after they released all of the uh, episodes, I think they added the the ability to play as all three of them, or all four of them. And I think Gordon Freeman's a playable character now as well. That would be sick because I do love Val. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty weird, <laughs> um, but I dig it. So what these are for those who are curious are like little side areas you can find that give you uh like jewel pieces or heart pieces yeah and you need to do a certain challenge in a certain amount of time very similar to the uh doom uh challenge rooms that we found during the doom lp yeah so yeah yeah it is pretty cool we're uh hopefully gonna start recording that soon yeah yeah uh we have Two episodes in the hopper that have just been sitting there. Right. And then we have, uh, and then we gotta start recording and we're gonna get it done. And then from there, uh, who knows? Right. Uh, then at that point, it's gonna probably be just me and you on that one. On what, Doom? On six, no, not Doom. Oh, uh, whatever on the, the next on LP, LP is. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, things uh, are gonna get a little weird for a minute. Yeah, uh, so. But it's it's kind of largely in preparation for a lot of really big shit. So yeah. So uh, so yeah. Uh, unnamed pirate thing is gonna be us and Ray. Yeah, we've got and possibly another person. We or, haven't quite named. Uh, I I think we're we should just end up calling it unnamed pirate thing because we have like a million different name ideas. Ninety percent of which are just me fucking around. I it's, I know that like I was talking with Ray last night. He said he 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 knows it's obvious, but he does kind of like quest for booty. Yeah. And I'm like, what about booty hunters? Uh, quest for booty's better between the two. Okay. 
Um, I'm still down with high C homies. High C homies are it. Uh, oh shit. But I mean, quest for booty is fine as long as we can name our ship Motion of the Ocean. I just yeah, don't. Yeah, that. absolutely. That's that's fine with me. Yeah, that's um, perfect. It's got to be a tiny little dinghy though. <laughs> No, you, you, it can't you, be a full-blown ship. You no, you, you don't get to choose. It scales the amount of players you have. Oh, okay. So if you have, uh, so you can do one, two, or four. Right. Uh, if you Who's going to be our fourth guy? Looking like Jared. Jared? Jared or or just a pug every week. True. We could have Dom. Yeah, Dom. Can, is, does he plan to buy Sea of Thieves? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. That's perfect. We could have Dom on it. Um, so, Sea of Thieves. Uh, I'd be down for Quest of Booty and the SSS. Uh, what, was it, what was it? The SSS what now? The S or the, uh, what do you want to call the ship again? The Motion of the Ocean. Motion, the SSS Motion of the Ocean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I'm down. That's too good. What are we going to call our pirate crew? I see homies? Uh, I guess so. Okay. I see homies is uh, fine by me. I was playing that game. I I sent you that text message about that game. Yeah. That someone tweeted at me, and I was yeah, like, yeah. okay. That was that's actually Pretty good. super smart. Mhm. Mm this guy's got the Millennium Puzzle around his neck. I don't want to spoil the plot stuff with him. <laughs> is he a Pharaoh? No. Pharaoh. This fucking guy. Damn, dude. Damn. You'll have to do better than that to earn a slot, my Who the hell are you? I'm just. He's got a card like like Yugi too. He's a pharaoh. Sure. That's the spoiler. Spoiler alert. He is a little high school boy with a pharaoh trapped inside of him. His name's Loki. He plays, uh, yeah, Loki, Yugi, I mean, sure. <laughs> he plays card games with a billionaire jackass. <laughs> billionaire jackass. And, <laughs> and <laughs> Brooklyn, New Yorker in Japan. His New, York, his, his New York best friend. But they live in Japan for some reason. Right. Yeah, the, uh... I almost bought Yu-Gi-Oh cards for the first time in like forever. Today. You know, it's really weird that you say that you say that, and the main reason is, is because I was at Walmart and they had like booster set slash like starter deck like packages. Yeah. One based around Yu-Gi, one based around Taiba. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, that'd be a dumb idea for a fucking show one one weekend. <laughs> we we were talking about doing that, weren't we? Yeah, it was supposed to be like a Thanksgiving thing. Yeah. It's like, it's just that and play League of Legends. Because <laughs> none of us like League. <laughs> All of us really dislike League. Yeah. Especially after uh, uh, my most recent ex. Oh, jeez. Uh, she really liked the League of Legends and had me play it with her and it was awful. <laughs> Worst experience of your life? No, that's probably still... That's still having a respiratory infection. Well, I mean, uh, as far as, like, media consumption goes, mine's still Dragon Ball Evolution, I think. Okay, yeah, it's not, probably not that bad either, but it's still pretty, like, I just don't enjoy the way that game works, Espe yeah. especially in comparison to its competitors. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, how hype is this? It's pretty hype. I, I, I just yawned really bad, which is funny. Um, I, I feel, I, I've been resisting the urge most of this show just because I, like, ate a jut. So we have a very good sandwich chain in, in the Reno area, and I'm pretty sure it's another part of the country, like Vegas, Probably, yeah. known as Capriotis. Yeah. And, Capriotis! Yeah, and they serve bomb sandwiches, but they're also gigantic, and I ordered I've honestly them. never been. And I, well, so like a medium is like a foot long. Unless How they, expensive are they? Uh, that was like, not, the sandwich itself was $9 for mm. a 12-inch sandwich. That's not too bad. I want, now I want Subway. I haven't had Subway in like months. I, you know, that's... I actually really dig Subway. That's interesting? Just because like, 
don't know. I, I'm, like, I'm, I don't hate Subway. I'm just kind of neutral on Subway. Every time I go to Subway, I know exactly what I want. It's I, never like a, hmm, do I feel like trying something new? It's like, no, I know what I want. I want... I, I have two orders there. Yeah. So... I have one order. I literally get the same sandwich every single time. Which I've is, converted people with my sandwich. Which is? It's uh, the spicy Italian, mm -hmm. but I get uh, ranch and creamy sriracha with, for the sauces, and uh, the oil, vinegar, salt, pepper, oregano, uh, olives, and I get pepper jack cheese. See, that sounds really good except for one part of it. The sriracha? The ranch. The ranch? Take the ranch off. Yeah, that's the... Take the ranch off, and you got the perfect sandwich. I do uh, turkey and cheddar. With uh, pepperoncinis, olives, uh, shakers, and uh, maize and mustard. Yeah, they they've got a good. Uh, they all their sauces are really good. Yeah, they, 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 I like Subway. I like Subway. The, the Italian bread. urban cheese bread. They are definitely my last choice for sandwich place. I would rather go to Subway than Porta Subs. I disagree. I'd um, rather go to Subway than Porta Subs. I. I, every time I go to Porta Subs, though, it's always the same Porta Subs, and it's it's like the worst one. Which one is it? It's the one on Plum. Oh, the, the like old... by the C, uh, yeah, in, that, the, in that's, the Shopper Square. Yeah, that's like the shittiest Porta Subs. Yeah, I hate that one. It's not even it's not even its own restaurant. It shares with the Vietnamese place. Yeah, yeah, I hate that one. And there's the clo the other closest Porta Subs is not any closer than the Subway that I go to. Yeah, like one of them is r one right by my work. Yeah. Porta Subs is okay, I just also feel like they don't have as much of a selection as Subway does. I will give you that. Their selection's not as good, but for my sandwich preference of choice, they can still knock it out. Yeah. Uh, Capriati's kind of is my number one choice. They you like Capriati's best? Capriati's! I mean, yeah, like, they, they, they have every, some... Every time, <laughs> every time that, that name comes up in my head, I think about it in, like, a Brooklyn accent. I mean, it fits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, they're really good... You ever been to the Spicy Pickle? I've not. I, uh, I used to work at the Spicy Pickle. They're a sandwich shop and their pickles are really good. Oh. I cannot attest to the quality of their sandwiches because I never ate there. Did you, when working there mean you get free lunch there? No, you get, uh, you have to pay for it. You get like 50% off. Oh. Yeah. I hate that. It's like, dude. Me too. Me really? too. I'm not about to slander, uh, Spicy Pickle either. Just like... Working for those owners was fine, but also, like, that wasn't my favorite job ever. Spicy Pickle was fine. It's the same owners of the Papa Murphy's on Moana. Okay. And the Papa Murphy's was, like, one of my least favorite jobs. I like some of my co-worker, co-workers, but the clientele and the fucking job itself was a pain in the ass. That's how I felt about AT&T. Papa Murphy's is also shit pizza. I would believe it. Papa Murphy's is shit pizza. I fucking hate that you have to bake it yourself. That doesn't bother me. It bothers me only for the price point. How, how much is a large, like, let's say a large pepperoni there? A large pepperoni there is like 16 bucks. And you have to take it home and bake it. Like, at that point, I expect it to be baked. You know? Like, I'm paying so much money for a goddamn, like, a large pepperoni pizza that isn't baked yet. Like, it just drives me crazy. It just drives me crazy. The concept of take and bake pizza is insane to me if you're not buying it from a grocery store. Yeah, like, or, like, just... Have it be in a pizzeria, just have it cheaper. Yeah, make it the cheaper version. Yeah, at that like, point you're using less labor. Yeah, like you, and you're like you're not burning as much power. Well, and the thing about the thing about like, Papa Murphy's too is that it's not even any much any much higher quality than your typical th than your typical pizza. chain pizza. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, You've had Papa Murphy's before, yeah, right? I, I've so They're, it's okay at best. So here's the thing: my chain of my chain pizza place of preference is Domino's. I like Pizza Hut better. I, I, but I like Domino's a lot. Like, if I can't get Pizza Hut for whatever reason, I'll get Domino's. My thing with... So, my problem with Pizza Hut is that they don't run as many deals as Domino's does. They don't, and I agree with you there. But as far as quality of pizza goes, I've always... Like, I've never had a bad experience with either, but I've definitely always had better experiences eating Pizza Hut than I have Domino's. I, 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 for me, it's been the other way, but I can... You know, I don't think pizza is bad at all. I like them. I think uh, my, my chain of choice is a uh, fucking round table. Round table's good. But I also not a fan. I also used to work at round table, and I know what kind of, like, sticklers they are for quality. I'm not particularly... I wasn't fond of round table. Really? Uh, no. I like their pizza buffet the best. Um, That's my favorite. The, the pizza restaurant I find disgusting is Godfather's. I, I haven't had Godfather's since I was a fucking child. 
Uh, Godfather's is awful, and no one should ever eat there. Um, Every time I've eaten there, it's been awful. When I was a kid, I liked it, but when I when you're a kid, you like pizza's pizza. Yeah. Pizza you, is pizza. You willingly eat Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still willingly eat Little Caesars. It's not like, yeah, it's but never like the, the last situation. Little, Little Caesars is not nearly as for bad five, as Chuck for, E. Cheese. I always hear people bitch about Little Caesars. They're always like, it's so gross, though. And I'm like, you're paying $5 for a, a large pepperoni pizza. Like, not only really that, like... What do you expect? They're not that bad, either. Yeah, they're not that... Like, you gotta eat them when they're hot. Yeah, that oh, was, absolutely. You I could not the, let a Little Caesars pizza get cold. No. I hate the fucking crust. Yeah. I hate the crust on Little Caesars, but that's honestly, I can get over that for five what, bucks. What, what are those things made out of? The pizza crust? Uh, like, just Little Caesars. Like, they make. That, that cannot be, like, no, a, they make a, it the same way that most other chain pizza places do, which is, like, uh, they have the pizza dough powder. Like, the, it, it comes in, like, a giant, like, mix, basically. They, like, just mix it with water. They basically. mix it with water in a big ass mixer, pretty much. It's, like, a giant spiral hook thing that spins it around and tumbles it after you mix it with water and sometimes oil and baking baking soda and shit like that or i think it's like it's like oil and uh yeah like baking powder. as far as non-chain pizza in town in town yeah let's go in town because if you go worldwide then we get really noble pie is never a bad option um not the best option obviously but never a bad option i wasn't a fan I, again, it's a price point thing for me. Like, the pizza's good, but for the price, it's a little overpriced. Like, um, Paisano's, I don't think, is great pizza as I, far as... I really like Paisano's, actually. Okay, so my problem with Piz with Paisano's is that um, I don't like my crust super crispy, and they always it's always too crispy. That's why I like about them. But also, but... their sauce is, is, like, chunky, and I hate chunky pizza sauce. Um, I'll give you that. Uh, I hate chunky pizza sauce. I, I want my sauce to be smooth. I agree with you. I do not like the chunks of tomato there. Yeah. But that's the only part of that pizza I don't like. Everything else is fine. Um, um, have you done? Have you gone to Boulevard? Not yet. No. Boulevard's probably my favorite. Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly got to go to more local pizza places. They just opened up the people who own Hukava just opened up Pizzava in Midtown, and I, I kind of want to check it out. I'm gonna have to try that. I tried Pizza Reno and. It disgusting was it gross yeah it was mm. awful. that's unfortunate ray's like hey we should try this place and i'm like fucking sure and i gotta figure it, out it like awful what all places i've been for pizza oh baron pizza they're good super good I uh love black baron rock's pizza. good um i like i think i like baron pizza because you can tell it's like it's like Every, About as authentic of, of, of a New York pizza as you're gonna get in Reno. That's that's kind of what Boulevard is. They use the brick oven and everything. Yeah, Blind Onion isn't bad. Yeah, they're solid. Blind yeah. Onion isn't bad. They're solid. I like them. Uh, what's the one on Victorian Avenue? I mean, is that Wild Garlic? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, that's pretty good too. There's Grimaldi's. Is Grimaldi's good? They're really good, but they're also kind of a. Uh, they're kind of like a date night place. Like, they're a really fancy piece of restaurant. Gotcha. Uh, they're good, though. They're damn good. Like, I've... Every time I go to one of those, like, fancy eateries, I always find that... Maybe this is just the poor person in me. But I always find that, like, the dingy, like, hole-in-the-wall places are better. Uh, most of the time, I agree with you. Grimaldi's is a special case. Yeah. But also, I was raised on, like, the like my fucking grandfather had old country recipes yeah. so it was one of those things where it's just like well I'm a snob for Italian food so no I mean I get it I, I I grew up in a in a fucking like like lower middle class household with five kids you and I had that hostess cupcake discussion but that was yeah. yeah yeah no I mean like a hostess cupcake is gross but I'll eat one yeah I'll fucking eat one I'll I will eat. Uh, I will. Boxed mac and cheese is disgusting, but I'll eat it because it tastes good. Um, you know, like hot dog. One of the one of the like staples in my household was hot dogs and mac and cheese because it costs like it costs like a dollar sixty to make that meal and it feeds like it feeds seven people just fine. I see. I never really like the only time you can ever really get me to eat a hot dog is a chili dog. 
I love 7-Eleven hot dogs. I used to. I love 7-Eleven hot dogs. Like, I kind of outgrew those. It was weird. Like, it was a weird thing when I just, like, one day went there and, like, didn't like it anymore. I absolutely know that it's disgusting and it's horrible for you and you should never eat one because it'll give you some fucking space worms. Yeah, but, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's... The space termites that exist in your stomach and make you smarter. Yes. But I, uh... Can't fucking I can't get over the fact that they still taste pretty good. I'm a sucker for like really potent and like poignant flavors. If your if your thing has a lot of flavor, then and it's a flavor I like. Like if it's a really robust flavor, then I really enjoy it. I I I'm like, I like a lot of spices. It, I'll put it that way. Yeah, like that's like I'm the same way when it comes to like you have a lot of like like you're very sweet, like you're very rich. Yeah. Like. That's why I fucking love Cheesecake Factory, because their pastas and their cheesecakes are fucking just ridiculously rich. Right. It's the same reason I like gelato. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's actually uh, something that Ray and I constantly uh, argue on when it comes to taste. He, he, he kind of dislikes rich foods. I like, like rich know, foods. He doesn't like <laughs> cheese all that much. Like, uh, you don't... I love cheese. I'm, I'm a insane, sucker for dude. cheese, dude. I'll eat the fuck out of you, cheese. You want to know what the, the... I'll eat a block of cheese. I'm gross. Like, same. Same. I'll eat a block uh, of cheese. My last drive up to Seattle, that 16-hour drive, I had a brick of cheese in my cooler. Yeah. My fucking cooler that I keep with me on yeah. trips, just fucking... I kind of try to make myself feel better about it by, like, slicing it up every time I want to take a bite out of it, you know? So I'm not just actually yeah. eating off the block of cheese. But it's the same shit. You're literally doing the same thing. Uh, this is probably a good place to... Yeah, I'll, I'll buy items and then show people the item shop and then we'll call it here. Yeah, because I was going to say, we don't want to enter another mission and then end up doing another 70-minute access. Yeah, all right, uh... Uh, so far though, Bayonetta 2, solid game, it's always a solid game. One of my, it's one of my favorite games ever. It's my, I super enjoy it. Uh, it is my favorite game of this console generation, or at least top three, really, like, right up there with uh, Titanfall 2. And yeah. Uh, well, sorry, forgot about this part. Well, he comes out of hell with new shit for you. This motherfucker did not want to listen to reason. <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. You know what we're going to do? We're going to make a t-shirt of Bernie Sanders' face. Yes! We yeah. got a new weapon. There you go. We're going to make an all-black t-shirt, and mm -hmm. it's going to have Bernie Sanders' face, like those inspirational quotes where, yeah. like, he's a... And it's going to say, in, in quotes, Donald Trump is a thought. <laughs> this motherfucker did not want to listen to reason. This motherfucker did not want to listen to reason. <laughs> I want that on a shirt, too. On, like, a vaporwave shirt. Did my money from the first one carry over to this one? That'd be pretty dang. Cause it, yeah, because you have a lot. I have a lot. Speaking of rich. Uh, but... So this is the shop. Buy stuff from yeah. Uh, you can scan amiibos to get money every day. Yeah, Thir you can do up to thirty-two per day. Which, in all honesty, do the amiibos do the amiibos drop costumes? They drop money. Oh, okay. Which you can use to buy uh, costumes, weapons like that's like the one we just got. Yeah. Uh, accessories give you special buffs and whatnot. They're mad expensive. Items we'll those expensive. speak for themselves. Uh, yeah. But we are gonna buy one of these. All right. Takes our health bar. Hell yeah. Buy another. And we'll buy one of these. And techniques. So Technique. You get more money to do more techniques. Like, I really like Bat Within. Uh, that's one, instead of taking damage, if you, like, it mitigates damage, and you also transform into bats to, to make it more likely to get witch time. That's pretty cool. Uh, break Dance. I'll show you. Uh, and then... That seems like a good starting point. I don't want to burn all my money. Oh, wait, hold on. And then his treasures in this one are how you get some of the special costumes. Oh, uh, like okay. Super Mirror, Super Mario 64 2. Uh, yeah, so that's how you get, like, the Star Fox costume and the whatnot. Yeah. I'll show you breakdancing. And the we'll whatnot! I'll show you breakdancing, and that'll get us to probably 55. Okay. Um, it's, mainly, it's mainly an ability used... Uh, for uh, AOE crowd control, so like if you're just in like a massive group of people, how do you do it? You hold R1. Oh, hold on. 
you hold R1. That's amazing. That is incredible. Do one more time. I love that. Best part is, is uh, just like the last game, you can change your, your weapons. We're going to put swords on her feet. Oh, it doesn't only works with gun weapons. Uh, but uh, just like the first one, if you have... Uh, if you have... I love that she has fucking swords on her feet. Yeah. You can get it at one point where she gets chainsaw feet. That's awesome. It's the best. Yeah. Anyway, I'll change that back. Um, uh, anyway, uh, if you have, like, guns attached to her feet, like a different kind of gun, like, I was playing through the first game and I had rocket launchers attached to her feet. <sighs> And it was fucking rockets shooting everywhere. <laughs> when you did the breakdancing. When I did the breakdancing. That's was... insanity. Boom. All right, everyone. That's uh, six minute access of Bayonetta 2. For the Switch. On the Switch. We'll be back next week with Seven Deadly Sins. Seven deadlier sins than you'll know. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this, everyone. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye. -bye. Bye.